Python tutorial Decision Tree Regression. Supervised machine learning consists of finding which class output target data belongs to or predicting its value by mapping its optimal relationship with input predictor's data. Main supervised learning tasks are classification and regression. This topic is part of regression machine learning with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of the video. Decision tree regression consists of supervised learning algorithm for predicting output target feature by optimal recursive binary splitting of output target and input predictor features data into incrementally smaller nodes. Top node is root node, internal nodes are decision nodes, and terminal nodes are leaf nodes. Tree pruning and time series cross-validation are used for lower invariance error source generated by a greater model complexity. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bryman, Friedman, Ocean and Stone, Classification and Regression Trees, published by CRC Press in 1984. Classification and regression trees algorithm consists of greedy top-down approach for finding optimal recursive binary node splits by locally minimizing variance at terminal nodes measured through mean square error function at each stage. As a formula, we have the minimization of mean square error. This mean square error is equal to 1 divided by n and is the number of observations multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the difference between output target feature data minus terminal node output target feature mean and that result to the power of 2. Terminal node output target feature mean in turn is equal to 1 divided by m, m is the number of observations within the terminal node, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the corresponding output target feature data. Great, so let's go into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study decision tree regression with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. The first step is that we do the packages importing for the tutorial. Notice that we are going to import numpy mp pandas as pd and from scikit-learn, we're going to import sklearn.tree as ml for our machine learning algorithm. Then we proceed to do the creation of the session tree regression data. For that, we do first of all data reading. We create this variable name spy equals to pd or pandas.read underscore csv, the path to the data file. This data file is found within data directory and the name of the data file decision tree regression data.txt. This is a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. Index column and date, and we parse those dates as true. So looking at that corresponding data file here within the data directory, we have, as mentioned, a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. Two columns of data. First we have dates, and then we have SPY adjusted. This SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Adjusted, related to those adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. Here we have data from the beginning of 2007 to the end of 2015. That corresponds to nine years of data. So going back into our code file here, the next step is we create target and predictor features. For this tutorial as an example, we'll be doing the target, the corresponding daily returns of the SPY ETF, and as predictor feature, we are going to use previous day's returns. 
Therefore, we create this variable named rspy for those returns equals to spy, the previously created variable, dot pct underscore change or percentage change and one period. So we're calculating the daily arithmetic returns. And then we're renaming its columns with rspy.columns equals to rspy. Then we create the rspy1 variable, which is equal to rspy shifted one position, meaning previous day's returns, with its corresponding column name as rspy1. And then we're creating a data frame which includes both of these variables, which we are naming rspy all initially equals to rspy, and then to that rspy all we join rspy1. Notice here that finally we do drop na, meaning that we remove any rows with non availables within them. Then we proceed to do our training and testing ranges delimiting. Within this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range for the decision tree regression. As an example here, we are creating, as mentioned, training and testing ranges rspyt, rspyf, t for training, f for testing range, and also, as an example, we are delimiting our training range as the first seven years of data and the testing range as the last two years of data. And this corresponding delimiting can also be modified according to your needs. So here we have our SPY all for the training range we're going to select from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the beginning of 2014. And for the testing range, we are selecting from the beginning of 2014 to the beginning of 2016, therefore the last two years of data. So then we proceed with the decision tree regression. The first step is we do the decision tree regression fitting and then we're going to print its structure. For that we create this variable named DTT for decision tree and T because this is calculated within the train range and we'll be using ML feature from scikit-learn dot decision tree regressor that's the function for its corresponding fitting capital d t and r the criterion we want to minimize is mse or the mean square error and here as an example we're using a tree with a maximum depth of one then here we have fit and first of all we have the corresponding predictor feature Notice that we need to do it as we have an individual predictor feature as numpy.array. That array is reshaped with minus one comma one. And for that corresponding predictor feature, we are using the train range. And specifically, we're selecting that predictor feature column, which is rspy1. Then we have the target feature from that same training range, rspyt. We're selecting rspy column. And then we proceed to print the results. Notice here that we create this new variable, which we are going to name DTTS as for its structure. And then here we open brackets and close them here and Kirby brackets comma for the next row. On the first row, we're going to print node Y value. Y stands for that target feature. And then the split threshold. The next row we have as we are doing this corresponding decision tree with a maximum depth of one, then we would have just one splitting. Therefore, we would have root node and two terminal nodes, one at the left and the other one at the right. For the root node, we are going to print its Y value, which all of those values are rounded for four decimal places. Therefore, we're using numpy or mp.round as mentioned here for four decimal places. And for the root node value from that previously calculated decision tree within the training range with dot tree underscore dot value at the zeroth position, we get that corresponding target feature value for the root node. At position one, we get it for that terminal node at the left. And at position number two, we get it for the terminal node at the right. Now, this is with Python notation, so zero is the first position, one is the second, and so on. And regarding the split threshold, as mentioned, we have a maximum depth of one. Therefore, there's just one corresponding threshold for the corresponding split. Therefore, it's found within that root node, and we do so with numpy round. And here again, from that corresponding calculation of decision tree, regression fitting 
with dot three underscore dot threshold and the zero of position. Those two cases for terminal left and terminal right nodes, we don't have threshold, so we're just going to print blank space. And last here, we're going to print decision tree regression structure. Notice that we do so as a data frame. So we use PD or pandas dot data frame for this DTTS or decision tree regression structure. Excellent. So let's go ahead and run this code file. So its name is already stored here and we just select the code file name and click run. Perfect. So that opens the running console and we are going to visualize the corresponding decision tree regression structure being printed here within the console and we are going to focus on it. So here we have decision tree regression structure. As mentioned, first of all, we have those nodes as we are doing a decision tree regressor with a maximum depth of one. Then we only have three nodes, the top or root node. We don't have any intermediate or decision nodes. Therefore, we just have terminal nodes, terminal or leaf nodes at the left and the one at the right. And then we have Y values. These Y values are related to that split threshold. So first the Y value, that's the arithmetic mean of the corresponding target feature from the corresponding training range where we are doing this decision tree regression. And then we have the Y value within the terminal node at the left. This value is the arithmetic mean of the target feature, but for the values which are found at the rows where the predictor feature was less than that split threshold. And then we have the Y value, also target feature value, which is the arithmetic mean of that corresponding target feature, but only for the target feature values where the corresponding rows where the predictor feature was greater than the corresponding split threshold. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying decision tree regression, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please, Pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. OK. So with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.